need you to make sure that you can get into the platform. All right, are there any questions? If you do, while I'm going to, I'm going to introduce um, one of the learning pathways in a minute, but if you have any questions at any time, please can you put it in the chat? Because then um, uh, Tony, myself, and um, is Kirsty still with us? Yes, Kirsty's still here. Uh, we'll try and help you immediately. And if it's something worth, um, if it's something that should be shared, then um, I will raise it uh, in the course of the presentation. Okay, all right. So make sure you found where the Zoom chat is. Have it fired up. Make sure that you're keeping an eye on it as well as listening to me. So any questions? You can either put your hand up, or you can just type it directly into the chat. All right, so I'm in the Moodle now and I'm scrolling down and I'm looking at the first one, find open content. I've already done my, my uh, baseline studies, so I'm ready to start. So you will click on this link here. Um, <clears throat> uh, what happens is another program will open. So something, something, um, that I might have to change my screen for, because I don't think you can see this. So let me just stop my share and then reshare so you can see the, the piece I want you to see. It's this one. Well, I'm hoping you can see this screen now. It should say find open content. Can you see that? According to the Zoom, it is. I'm just going to make it a little bit less long. My screen is very long. All right. Can you still see that? All right. So I'm going to now introduce Find Open Content. And um, this is a little, uh, this is the learning pathway. And our, our design thinking at the time was we need to be able to get the information across very quickly. People in this day and age don't have time to go on workshops you can't anyway these days. Um, they don't have lots of time available for, for new skills. So we're going to find a, a new way of doing CPD, which is short, sharp, engaging, interesting, maybe sexy even, although does an old person like me really understand. Anyway, uh, so the idea then is this is what we're trying to achieve. We're trying to get key information, but more importantly, skills across quickly and sharply and in, in an engaging way. All right, so here we go. This is a short, sharp tutorial to acquire the skills necessary to search for open content, to decipher, decipher Creative Commons rights, and to evaluate the usefulness of open educational resources for new purposes. So that's what we're trying to achieve. So keep that in mind with your, with your evaluation hat on. Does this little learning pathway achieve that? So let's go in. So here's our list of what we're going to cover. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of it now, um, but then I'm going to ask you to push on on your own in your own time. Okay, so what are we going to cover in this learning pathway? So um, this is our little schematic what we're trying to achieve. So we're going to give a little introduction. Um, why even bother? Then we're going to look at open licensing. Um, what do these Creative Commons licenses allow and what do they not allow um, librarians and academics to do with the resources? We're going to look at what different types of open content are there. Now we've mentioned OERs, that's in the name of OER Africa, but there's different types of open content. So we'll also have a quick look at open courseware, very useful, and then MOOCs. Hmm. MOOCs are open, but they have issues. So we'll talk about the issues as well. Okay. Then we're going to go on and look at open search techniques. So how do you find them? And this is the sad thing about these OERs, is that yes, they they can be brilliant, but they're not always easy to find. So I'm going to show you a couple of little tricks and then we can um, 
uh, encourage your academics to also look for things that are, are relevant uh, and so on. So we're going to look at Google Advanced Search. We're going to look at the Creative Commons Search. We're going to look at YouTube, for example. YouTube allows us to find uh, openly licensed videos. And then there are some very well-known famous repositories of open content. So we'll look at MIT, we'll look at Merlot, we'll look at Open UCT and various other uh, repositories. And then what happens when you found them? How do you know if they're any good? So we're going to have a little section on evaluation. How do you evaluate your results when you find them? So we're going to look at that. Okay. So that's the overview of the little learning pathway. And we're going to work our way through that. I'm just checking the questions. No one's asked any questions yet. Is that right? Am I that good an educator that you guys are all on board and know exactly what's going on? There are no questions on the chat. Just to remind people, the easiest way is to put a, 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 a question on the chat and then either Nkem or I will, will pick it up. This is Tony Lelliot speaking. Thanks, Andrew. Okay. All right. So therefore, um, you, uh, there's all the outcomes. You, you can just click on these little things and find out a little bit more about uh, what the outcomes are. There are apparently f five. Do you know how to decipher open licensing? Can you identify different types of open content? Uh, what are the search tools that you need to be able to use in order to find the content? How do you work your way through these open repositories? And then when you found something, how do you evaluate whether it's any good? All right, so now we start the first real piece of content in the learning pathway. Why even bother? Okay, is there an advantage in looking for and using open content? Okay, and we like to think obviously there is. And in fact, whenever we talk to educators, um, all right, well, let's, let me ask you a question. How many of you feel comfortable with OERs? Do you know what they are? Uh, or is this a new concept for you? So I would like everyone to put in the chat whether they think they are familiar with OERs. Do I need to go into a lot of detail or can I just flick past them? Let me know. So now, an activity for everyone. I want you to type in the chat, how familiar are you with OER? How familiar are you with OER? Do you know what they mean? Have you used them? So to what extent? Try and rate your, or give us an indication of how familiar are you with OERs? And I'm waiting, I'm watching the, I'm watching the chat to see who says what. Please just write in the chat um, space if, you're, if you know about OER, you know, maybe you have a little bit of experience with it or you know how it works, you know, perfectly well. Just share with us because it will help us to know how to proceed. Okay, so Emmanuel has been very brave and very fast. Emmanuel has already told us. Okay. Yeah. What about the rest of you? I want to hear what you've got to. Right. Aloysius. The concept may not be familiar, but probably I know it in a different methodology, and that's quite possible. Okay. Maybe you know it as something else. So, um, all right. So it looks like I am going to have to unpack these things. What else? That's two of you. Emmanuel's also not so familiar. Whereas Edward says he is familiar with him, he's been down this road before. Uh, Olga, she's not so sure. All right. Yeah. What about the rest? Rahila. Rahila, we've not heard from you. We've not heard from you, Ijoma. We've not heard from you, Ngozi. Oh, I'm happy that the um, University of Abuja Library that you're here. So just tell us do you know anything about oer you know much little it doesn't matter every answer is correct we just exactly. want to know how to um, proceed so that uh, we'll be sure that everybody gets on the same page eventually all right so we've got francis says uh yeah also needing some clarification we've got richard saying that he is familiar with oers Doris, where are you? 
Hmm? Uh, Ngozi, where are you? Hey, come, let me know. You're being watched. You're online. Your every moment is being analyzed by artificial intelligence. Don't get carried away, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> well, my intelligence is artificial, probably. All right. Okay. Come, come. Where's these comments? You're not passively listening. You are involved. Let's go. Let's go. Type up in the chats. Yeah. No passive learning here. We want you engaged. Come. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where's your to come back? Yeah, find that chat. Come, come, come. All right. Okay. Techno3 raised her hand, so we need to unmute her. All right. Okay. Hello. Good morning, ma. Yeah, go on, go on. Yeah. Uh, I'm Rahila Ali already. I'm on the line listening to you people. Excellent. I'm the yeah, one on this for three plus. Yeah, we asked a question. Do you have any idea what OERs are? Are you familiar with it at all, with, with, with the concept? Have you worked with it? But like we said, no answer is wrong. We just want to know, you know, what you know so that we can help you know better. So do you know about OERs? No, ma, I don't know. At all? All right. All right. Uh, okay, then you're in the right place because we're going to yeah. give you all the data. All right. Exactly. Okay, people, this is... Um, as we go online and start doing more and more of these Zooms and these Teams and these Skypes and all that type of thing, um, it's uh, a good facilitator and, it, and when you get a chance to facilitate, you must do the same thing. Be very careful that people don't become too passive. They just sit there pretending to listen, right? Because then no learning's happening at all. You're just wasting everyone's time. So the chat was a little experiment to see if, you, if you're following. All right. The fact that some of you are a little slow off the mark, I'm hoping it's because the environment is new. But when I ask questions, I want you to come and climb all over me and, and tell me what you think. All right. So um, I'm get picking up from what most of the people have written here that we need to explain these things in some detail. Okay. There's three or four of you familiar, but the rest of you is pretty new. Okay. So what are these OERs? And the little tutorial, the little learning pathway tries to answer that question. So many educators appreciate the value of openly licensed content. That is to find and share quality, free educational resources where you don't need to ask for permission and that you can adapt to better suit your local context and needs. All right, so, okay, these OERs then, free so there's no copyright costs involved all right that you can um you don't have to go and ask the author or the institution if you can take a copy that's kind of given you can take an oer and make as many copies as you like that's no problem and that some of them allow you to change them all right so the thinking then is that a resource it might be for um, uh, a psychology one course but if you can get it and it's got an open license, then you can adapt it. So if it doesn't quite fit the curriculum or the syllabus, you can adapt it. If you think there are some local examples which better illustrate something, you can insert them into the content. Um, if you feel the language is pitched incorrectly, then you can change the language to suit um, different English users. Or if it's in the wrong language, you can translate it into another language without asking for permission. Okay, so the, they can, most of them can be adapted. Let me play you a little propaganda movie. Okay, this is quite cute. A few years ago, a professor taught a climate change course reaching about 100 students per semester. One day he thought, If I could upload this course online, then not only would my 100 students have access to it, but others as well. So he did. And this is what happened. Anna sent the course's content across the country to Alex, who was studying climate change. Alex found it so interesting that he forwarded a copy to his friend Lulu in Africa. Lulu was developing peer-to-peer -peer courses with Philip, so they remixed the content with other resources 
and created a new course about the impacts of climate change in Africa. Alan, a participant in the course, shared the content with Gabby, who was studying environmental policy in Latin America. Gabby brought the content to her class, and together they translated it into Spanish. After that, Gabby's professor shared it with his other classes. Myra, another student, shared the content with her father, who passed it on to his colleagues. Gabby's professor also forwarded the content to David, a colleague in the UK who was researching climate change. He updated some of the data, adapted it to his study, and published an article in an open journal. Researchers from all over the world were able to read the article. David sent the updated content back to the original professor. By then, his course had reached so many more people than his 100 students. Years later, many schools had begun to follow the example and open access to their content. Governments began promoting the use of open textbooks, and students began saving money on books. Other innovative universities began to open access to entire courses, making them available to participants from all around the world. These are open educational resources, teaching, learning, research resources that can be reused, redistributed, remixed, and revised. Open educational resources are accessible to everyone. Learners, teachers, researchers, parents, workers, citizens, to you. This is open education, knowledge as a public good. Everyone has the right to be educated, yet only a few have access to school. Open educational resources increase access to, improve quality of, and reduce costs of education. Sharing, Sharing knowledge, knowledge is, is important. important. Now you know, open educational resources give everyone the opportunity to learn. Okay, so there you go, a little bit of propaganda. Obviously, though, the principles are correct. Um, it doesn't always work as beautifully as that. Um, there are often you got to work a little bit to really get the sharing to, to happen. But as librarians, you guys are very important in that chain whereby people are sharing and people are adapting a, <clears throat> a resource to work in different contexts for Africa, for Latin America, and so on. So um, it's very important that you guys understand what these things are and then begin to get to grips with the skills required to actually do what seemed quite easy in the video. In reality, it, it takes a little bit of practice. All right, so um, that's what OERs are. Are you guys reasonably happy that you um, that you you're beginning to become familiar? All right. Um, <clears throat> the problem, though, is in the video it was all very easy for uh, people to um, share stuff, and uh, it is out there that they are out there waiting to be found, but not everyone knows how to find them and how to share. So that's what these little learning pathways are for. We're trying to unravel that little knot. So the issue is how to find these resources as there is no one stop shop for open resources. There's not one repository. There's not one, one data bank. So we need you guys to be able to find them. Okay, do you know how to find OER? Well, that's why you're here. Okay, the idea is we will show you some tricks and how to quickly find relevant OERs. Okay, so each of these little learning pathways, there's a think section and there's a reflect section and we would like you to spend some moments having a ponder on each of these questions before you plow on into the next part of the learning pathway. So please have a little reflection. And then if you need some generic feedback, we have given you a little box. You can click on it to try and um, answer your question or at least to provide you with some background. All right, so let's get going. How do we know when a resource is open? And how is it different from any other educational resource is the question we would like you to consider at this point. Okay. And the trick is we know if something is open because of its license. Okay. Each of these openly licensed materials has a little license plate 
and it tells us what are the various things we can do with the OER. So in order to find good OER, you need to understand also what is open and what is not. And if it is open, how open is it? All right, so we're going to have a little look at Creative Commons licenses. Now, most OERs, I would say 99.9% .9 of OERs use the Creative Commons system, whereby it identifies rights and permissions. So keep that in mind then. We know an OER is open if it has a license, and it's most likely the license will be a Creative Commons license. So how do these licenses work? So I'm going to show you another video, all right, to get things going. Educational resources are automatically copyrighted when you create them under U.S. copyright law. So let's say that I wrote a textbook, for example. I own that and nobody can use it without my permission. When we openly license that textbook, what we're doing is we're giving a license. We're giving permissions to the public to use that book under the terms of the license. Licenses are a part of the copyright system all around the world. They're used by big companies, like when a clothing manufacturer wants to sell a superhero t-shirt. And so licenses are part of the fabric of copyright law. But all of those licenses are negotiated one-to-one. -one. So when a company wants to use a text or a song or a character or part of a movie that belongs to a different rights holder, they have to have their lawyers sit down with the other lawyers and it takes time and money. So adding a Creative Commons license to a work is like saying, hey, this resource is free for you to use however you want. The basic Creative Commons license is the CC BY license or the Creative Commons Attribution license. And that's the most basic Creative Commons license. And all it says is you can use this work, this copyrighted thing, this photograph, this book, this song, if you attribute it to me, the creator. The reason a lot of educators and, and governments more and more are choosing that license is that the only requirement is to give proper attribution to the author, to the original creator. That's really easy to do. It also allows you to remix those works with other openly licensed works in a very easy way. And um, teachers have always given each other materials and if you know the person you're sharing the materials with, you can give them permission. But when you want to share materials with teachers across the country and potentially teachers across the world, you need a standardized way to do that. And that's what the Creative Commons licenses are. Okay, all right, that was it. Oh, we got someone giving us feedback. It's in Gozi again. I'm going to just. I don't know if that worked, but all right. Um, uh, so, all right, so then there are these, there are these um, different types of licenses. And if you look on the diagram on the screen, here they are. So uh, you can see there's six very well known popular Creative Commons licenses. There they are, uh, one under the other on, in the first column. But you'll notice that each of them are made up of a combination of rights. Okay, so there's the four rights on, in the right-hand column. Attribution, no derivatives, share alike and non-commercial. All right, so that's the trick, is whereas full copyright is all rights reserved, it means you can do nothing with the resource without asking for permission, okay, from the publisher or the author. And public domain, I don't know if you've heard of public domain, but that's the other extreme. It's no rights reserved. That means that you basically have surrendered the resource and it's out there and people can do with it what they like and you've kind of lost control of it. Whereas Creative Commons lets you play in the middle, some rights reserved. So th these are the four rights that you can reserve. And the idea then is you don't lose your resource, you just permit people to do various open things with it. So for example, attribution, as it said in the video, you can do whatever you like with my resource, but you must attribute me as the creator. All right, so that's no skin off our nose as librarians and as academics, we've always had to cite our sources. So cool, it's the same, all right. Um, ND is 
no derivative works. So it basically means there that you can take the resource, you can make copies, you can head it out to your colleagues, you can head it out to your students. There's no restriction on making copies, but you may not change the resource. All right, so the idea then is you have to use it as is. Okay, so that's no derivatives. Others can only copy, distribute, or display uh, verbatim copies of your work, says the little label. Okay, I'm going to jump to the fourth one. It's a bit easier. Non-commercial simply means that you can do whatever you like with the resource, but you may not sell it. Okay, you may not sell the IP. The IP has to stay free. The intellectual property is not for sale. It is free, all right? So the idea then is you can't make a profit from using the resource. So say, for example, you loaded a whole load of OERs which had these NC as part of their license onto a USB stick and were handing it out to your students, but you charged them and you charged them more than the cost of the USB stick. Nah, 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 nah. You're making a profit from someone's IP. So that is not allowed if the license has NC written on it, okay? non-commercial and then the fourth one is called share alike this one's a little bit more complicated it simply means that should you take an oer and adapt it make a derivative make a new version of the resource then your new version needs to have exactly the same license so the license carries over all right, so you can use the resource, you can do what you like, you can make derivatives, um, but your new version must be shared alike. It must be shared in the same way. So therefore, we call that one share alike. Cool. So those are the four rights that you can reserve under Creative Commons. And if you look on the left again, the first column, you can see the six most popular combinations of those rights. The lady in the video said the top one is the most open. You can basically do what you like with that one, but somewhere you must attribute the creator, okay? The, um, the third one, for example, is similar. It says you can do whatever you like with the resource, but you must attribute the creator, the original creator, and you may not sell that piece of work uh, for profit. Um, the fourth one is CC by ND. You can do whatever you like with the resource, um, but you must attribute where the original came from and you may not change it. You have to keep it the same. You have to use it as is. And then the, um, the very last one is quite restrictive. So if we're looking at it from terms of what is open and what is quite restricted, then as we got down the list, it became more restrictive. You could say this last one, CC by NCND, is not that different from full copyright. Yes, you're allowed to make copies and distribute them, but after that, it's pretty fixed, all right? You must attribute where it came from. The, um, you may not make a profit from it. You may not put it in a textbook which you're going to sell or anything like that, and you may not change it. It has to stay exactly as it is. So that one is quite restrictive, and it's, that's why it's at the bottom of the column, okay? The two I've skipped out, the second one, and the fifth one have SA in it, share alike. That simply means you can do whatever you like with the resource, but please attribute, please don't make a profit from it. And any derivatives that you create, any version, new versions, must have the same license. Wow, that was fast. Did you get that? Maybe not. All right. So, um, I would like you to, uh, I'm up to, it's now 12 o'clock, so I'm going to start winding down this little demonstration. We're going to uh, look at adapting open content in a moment. But uh, for those of you who are, have signed up to do this particular um, learning pathway, I want you to go through it. I want you to have another look at these licenses, and you'll notice that there's actually a quiz. So we want to see to what extent all of that yada, 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 yada that I've just done uh, is in there. So for example, let me just do a question. Okay, not that one. Right, this one, this one. Okay, so 
in the chat, I want you to answer this question. The question is, which statement best describes the ND right? There's the symbol, the ND right. There's the four options. Is it A, B, C, or D? So in the chat now, I want you to type. Everyone has to tell me if they think it is A, B, C, or D. All right. So let's have a look at it again. The question is... Yeah, scroll it down a little, yeah. yeah. Which statement best describes the ND right? Let me get it a little small. Do they know what ND means? Ah, well, that's, they must see if they can remember from, mm. from my blub. Can you remember ND? It's got the symbol with these two horizontal lines. ND, what does that mean? That will help. In that, let's get it so it's all on the screen. There we go. That's, that's which one best describes it. Is it the first? Is that, well, we know, we're using letters. So is it A, B, C, or D? Which? It's a little bit smaller, Andrew. All right, hang on. Me... Yeah, so that you can feel the screen. How do I do that? <laughs> hang on, give me a second. Let me find how I make it. Is yeah, it better? Okay. No, we can't. Yeah, that is. Well, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's okay. All right, so I'll read it again in case it doesn't appear on your screen. Maybe you're on a phone or something. So um, basically, the question is, which statement best describes the ND right? And there's the image, the, the Creative Commons icon, which describes this ND right. And the options are A, the users cannot make any copies. B, users cannot change the resource. C, users can change only the images in the resource. Or D, users can make only one copy of the original. So based on what I said a, a moment ago, can you now, in the chat, answer the question? Is it A, B, C, or D? Go. Are we here? Yeah, no, we're waiting. <laughs> we are watching with eagle eyes. Uh, the no, no, no answers yet. Are you are your guys even there? Ah, here we are. Uh, all right. Here we go. Olga's all right. Got, got two so far. He's gone for B. What the rest? Can you remember what I said? Or were you snoozing? Were you sleeping? There's another uh, one. Or he's gone for B. Emmanuel's gone for B. Richard's gone for B. Yeah, they're coming up now. Okay, come, come, come. In the chat. Which one? Okay. Idioma. Or Idioma has gone for B. Mm. Aloysius. B. Okay, I think we begin to see a trend, guys. Okay, is it B? <laughs> is it really B? Rahila, Rahila and University of Abuja, we've not heard from you. Please type in the chat box so that we, we, we can feel you. And, and two of you are using one, um, one device. I can see two people from University Rah of Abuja. Rahia, Rahia has raised her hand. Okay, okay. Rahila, maybe, maybe she can type. All right. Yeah, let's unmute her so that she can say her answer. She can give us her answer. Rahila. Rahila, you can talk. You're muted. I can talk now. I've, I've, I've typed it already and I've sent it. I don't know why it's not reflecting there. All right. Okay. Okay. You, well, yeah, I'm online with you people. Did you go with What's your answer? Eh? Which one did you go what for? Answer did you do? What is answer It's cracking. I said I'm online already. I said, is it, is it A or B or C or D? Which answer did you provide to the question? A. A. You said, 
<laughs> right, let's try. Let's see what happens. So most of you have gone for B, all right? So um, I'm going to go for B because it's it looks like it's a serious trend. So let's click on B, and you'll see it says submit. So let's find out what it says. Ta-da! Correct. Okay. Yeah. So, um, no derivatives is what MD stands for. No derivatives. It says it lets you copy, distribute, display, and perform only original copies of the work. Okay, so it can't be changed. If you want to modify the work, you must get permission first. Okay, so cool. Um, obviously, I'm a brilliant educator because it looks like it was like 90% of my class got that one right. Okay. And there are some many other questions. So we would like you to now, please, for those people who have signed up for finding open content, can you please work your way through the learning pathway? And there will be quizzes and there's videos and there's drag and drop experiments and so on. So we want you to get stuck in and see if you uh, are experts on finding OERs at a later stage once you've worked through it. Okay, are there any questions? I'll put the link. You can get the link. For this. I'm doing the baseline as well, Andrew, before they go to the pathway. Yes. Uh, before you start, we remember this is, this is a scientific experiment, all right? So we need the baseline data. So please, can you do the baseline quiz first, okay? And it's in the, let me put the, the link to the Moodle uh, in the chat now so that you guys can um, start seeing if you can get in. We just come here and here it is. Okay. So the Moodle, I'm putting it in the chat, uh, is there. All right. Uh, it's going to ask you to log in. And uh, if you've forgotten your login or it doesn't work, you need to contact me. And uh, we've got another man, Elias, who will help us if there's really big issues. Okay. All right. If you want to go straight on and do the baseline first, let me give you that link. But again, if you want the certificate, you've got to go through the Moodle. All right. But if you just want to go and do the baseline, I'll give you that link too. Uh, sorry. Give me a second. I'll get it. Find it. Uh, in the assignment, I to run. Okay. Yes, I to run. Finding. What is this? I to run. Finding, 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 finding. Where have you gone? Oh, let me just use the Google link, the Moodle link. Finding, finding, finding. Here it is. Okay. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't try and type it, it's pretty long, but here it is coming up again in the Moodle, uh, sorry, in the chat. Um, so the baseline is here. Right, did you get that? So if you want the certificate, you, I want you to go through the Moodle first. If you don't care about the certificate, you can go straight to the baseline and just do it on Google Forms. It's there. And uh, again, uh, if you want the certificate, you've got to access the learning pathway from inside the Moodle. Otherwise, you can just click this link. And I hope this works. Control C. All right, and then the LP, we call them LPs, can be got. I think that works. All right. So I'm going to wrap up from a learning, uh, a from a finding open content section. Um, if you want the certificate, do everything from within the Moodle. There's the first link. If you say, oh, just let me get on with it. Can you do the baseline, please? There's a link to the baseline. And then there's the LP, the learning pathway. If you just want to go to the learning pathway and just get on, find out more about Creative Commons and OERs and finding them, then you can click that link. All right. I see Bernard Egioma says he doesn't understand. Understand what? Give me, where are you struggling? Uh, 
Andrew, I'm just looking at time. Uh, we are after 12 now. All right, I'll get going on the next one. Just, all right. I'll just give people a chance and then. All right, so there you are, people. We want you to go, uh, if you want to access all the goodies in one place and get a certificate at the end, you need to make sure you've logged into the Moodle platform that I was showing on the screen. If you want to, uh, if you're not interested in that, we still want you to do the baseline. So can you click on the second link, which will take you to Google Forms and fill in the baseline. And again, if you just want to access the learning pathway and get on with it and find out more from what we're doing, then there's the third link, all right? However, in the Moodle is all those links. So you don't have to remember them. They're all in one place. Oh, I see Bernard's interested about the certificate. The certificate we're only giving to people who are using the links in the Moodle because Moodle will track you. So uh, once you go in, it tells us what you've done, what you've looked at. And uh, therefore, if you want the certificate, uh, it's not me who's going to give you the certificate, it's Moodle who's going to give you the certificate. So you have to do it from within that, in that, uh, in that place. All right. Any more questions about finding open content, please act, uh, talk to me and I'll uh, try and help.